again and welcome to another in our continuing series of monthly five-minute fly the wing flight maneuver videos. This month it's all about soft field takeoffs. When performing any maneuver or landing, I like to first summarize what the objective is. In the case of a soft field takeoff, the whole point is to transfer the weight of the airplane from the wheels to the wings as soon as possible. Now the wheels rolling through mud or tall grass or over an uneven surface produce an enormous amount of drag. We want to get away from that surface ASAP and fly the plane in ground effect until we accelerate enough to climb out at VY or at VX in the case of obstacles. The soft field takeoff usually begins with the taxi. At a true soft field, we want to do our run-up and pre-flight checks on a paved or hard surface and make the taxi to and onto the runway one continuous operation. Keep back pressure on the yoke to keep the nose wheel from digging in. Make wide turns without stopping and generally don't use any brakes. When simulating soft field operations on a paved runway at a towered airport, you'll most likely not be able to do all that. But at least be aware of the procedures and and be able to simulate or explain them. And as always, check your own plane's POH for the exact procedures. But as we get out on the runway, add full power smoothly and fairly rapidly. Maintain back pressure on the yoke to keep weight off the nose and to establish that high angle of attack that will get the airplane flying as soon as possible. Keep in mind all those left turning torque tendencies with that high angle of attack and limited visibility that you'll have with that nose up. Once airborne, lower the nose enough to remain in ground effect and accelerate just inches over the runway until you reach desired climb speed. Once you have a positive rate of climb established, you can clean up the airplane just as in any other takeoff, milking the flaps and retracting the gear and adjusting power as required. Well, let's go out now and see how we do with soft field takeoffs. The soft field takeoff actually begins as we taxi out. We want to keep the plane moving. No use of brakes shouldn't be necessary if you're really on dirt or grass. And keep that yoke back. It keeps pressure off the nose wheel. And in a tricycle gear airplane, that's a pretty good habit to get into to begin with. You'll get better wear on your tire and your nose strut if you taxi with minimum pressure. Of course, remember the brakes are on the mains. They're not on the nose wheel anyway. So if you did need brakes, you'd want the yoke back. As we approach the departure end of our runway, we're going to make our call, look for any other traffic, and keep rolling. We don't want to stop. We've got 20 degrees of flaps in, and we're good to go. Borrego Valley traffic, white skyline, departing runway 8, Borrego Valley. Don't see anybody on final base or downwind. Big wide turns, no brakes. Keep the plane rolling, and as we come out to the runway, not necessarily a short field, it's just a soft field. We've got 5,000 feet here, so there's no problem. We just want to keep the plane moving. We bring in power smoothly, continuously, and as we do that, we relax a little bit of back pressure. We don't want to bang the tail down, but we do want to keep the nose up. As soon as we get minimum flying airspeed, we lower the nose and fly over the runway in ground effect until we climb or accelerate to either VX if we've got an obstacle to climb over or VY. In this case there is no obstacle, there's nothing but desert ahead of us. We get the plane to 84 and then we can pitch up and climb out at VY. When we get the positive rate of climb going we can milk out the flaps one notch at a time and that's your soft field takeoff. A couple of the common errors you'll encounter when practicing soft field takeoffs are insufficient elevator back pressure while taxiing and taking off to keep the weight off the nose wheel, not maintaining directional control when you're rolling down the runway to take off, you're going to have a high nose pitch angle and you may not even be able to see the runway directly in front of you. Climbing too steeply after liftoff is another error. Remember to keep the plane just inches over the runway after takeoff until you've reached VY airspeed or VX if there's obstacles to clear. Because of insurance reasons, most of us get very few opportunities to actually practice at grass or dirt airstrips. But that doesn't mean you can't remain sharp on the procedures long after the check ride is over. Go out, have fun, fly safely, and I'll see you again next month for another 5-Minute Fly the Wing Flight Maneuver video.